This is Seven National News and in our top story. Data gathering for the Sharjah census by officials from the Department of Statistics and Community Development has officially kicked off today. According to officials, the census will see the participation of more than 1,800 researchers, observers and volunteers in this phase and will run up to the 20th of November, covering all residences, individuals and properties in the Emirate of Sharjah. Census staff will be making field visits to homes and facilities to collect preliminary data, including the addresses and coordinates of houses, the number of members of each family, the name of the person interviewed, a phone number to communicate with this person, and the family and identity card numbers. This phase will be conducted daily from 3 in the afternoon until 10 in the evening. Citizens and residents of the Emirate can fill in the census form manually or electronically through the ICE census, which eliminates the need for researchers to visit the family again during the counting stage, which begins on the 6th of December. Officials have urged everyone in Sharjah to cooperate with the census teams and submit their identity cards numbers and other required information to ensure the census is successful. The Federal Authority for Nuclear Regulation has hosted a forum in the western region of Abu Dhabi to heighten public awareness of FANR's role in overseeing the safe, secure and peaceful uses of nuclear energy in the UAE. The session featured a panel of experts who described how FANR is establishing a framework of regulations to maximize the safety of nuclear and radiological activities in the country and to ensure that these activities are carried out in a way that protects workers, the public and the environment. The panel presentations were then followed by an extensive question and answer session that addressed questions on a wide range of issues including nuclear safety, radioactive waste management, radiation safety, emergency preparedness and employment and academic opportunities in the nuclear sector. The number of people suffering from dementia worldwide is increasing, that's according to the United Nations. An estimated 44 million people suffer from the disease which affects brain function and often leads to disability with the numbers of newly diagnosed cases on the rise due to ageing. The UN Economic Commission for Europe has released a detailed policy brief on dementia and is calling for more to be done to address the unique challenges faced by those who suffer from the disease. According to the report's authors, it's important to recognize that people with dementia are at risk of particular types of discrimination and that the violation of their dignity is a concern as a result of sufferers' inability to express their needs, preferences and feelings which are constrained by their illness. It was stated that the discrimination can take different forms and people with dementia are often ignored. The latest UNECE policy brief on ageing focuses on ways to ensure the dignity and equal treatment of persons with dementia and has emphasised the importance of timely and accurate diagnosis of dementia, reorienting care services towards dignity-focused approaches, supporting participation of persons with dementia both in social life and in the labour market, as well as the development of dementia-friendly environments. The report also highlighted that ensuring the rights and dignity of persons with dementia should be a principle built into public laws and regulations at all levels of government, encompassing the full spectrum of policy sectors, including health and social care, pension systems and transport. The Ministry of Education is launching a hotline for students to report any behaviour or acts that may threaten their physical and psychological well-being or educational progress. The move by the Ministry comes in the wake of multiple videos that have emerged on social media showing separate incidences of teachers hitting students in classrooms. Hussein bin Ibrahim al Hamadi, the Minister of Education, stated last week that corporal punishment at schools is rejected and that the incident in the video, which went viral on social media, is not representative of the practices and standards of the country's schools and the noble values upheld by Emirati society. As an effective means of communication with students and their families, the new hotline will be supervised by experts to allow students to contact the ministry officials and report any case that might affect their educational progress or hamper their physical and physiological well-being. 
The minister noted that the move is also aimed at achieving transparency and preventing students from reporting incidents at school in a wrong manner. Residents will now be able to switch between fixed phone and broadband operators after the two telecommunications companies in the UAE signed a formal agreement. Etisalat and Du signed the deal to share the country's fibre network, which will allow them to offer services to customers who have been limited to one provider. The Telecommunications Regulatory Authority yesterday said the move would lead to great improvements in the quality of services through healthy competition. Initially, the competition will only be, f only be over fixed phone and broadband services rather than triple play packages that include TV with UAE residents to get television service choice in 9 to 12 months. Etisalat and Do began offering bit streaming two months ago, which is a method through which the network is shared. The deal was reached after six years of negotiations with the TRA. Both operators yesterday said they welcomed the move towards competition. The complete lineup of authors for the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature has been announced, featuring more than 140 names from 30 countries, including James Bond author Anthony Horowitz and astronaut superstar Chris Hatfield. At an event in Dubai Festival City, it was announced that for the first time, the festival, to be held from the 1st to the 12th of March next, next year, will feature a whole host of events and speaking engagements, with many internationally acclaimed authors taking centre stage. Speaking at the event, the CEO and trustee of the Emirates Literature Foundation and festival director Isabel Abulhul stated that this year's edition will be a brand new adventure for the audiences as the event will take them in the past through Shakespeare's Strand while also looking at the present and the future. During his remarks, the acting director general of the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority mentioned that the aim of the festival is to highlight the importance of the culture of reading among generations across all ages and they are immensely confident that UAE residents will cherish the unique gathering of so many literary minds, including many Emirati authors on one single stage. It was mentioned that among many new features planned for the festival this year, Poetry Live, Literary Cruise and Desert Stanzas events will allow schools and festival audiences to listen to their favourite authors as they perform their work. We've extended the festival to 12 days just because we could not fit all the authors in. And so this is a result, I think, of the word is out there internationally that Dubai is a wonderful place to come. It is a place of culture and the Literary Festival is um, a mix where everyone can get together regardless of what nationality they are or which language they speak they will find something to enjoy at the festival and it is a festival so it's never boring it's never dull it's fun exciting there are arguments there are debates but come along and enjoy it this festival is really a great showcase of the public partnership with the private sector you know we have uh, the Dubai government in terms of the Dubai Culture Arts Authority, we have Emirates Airline, the semi-government, uh, uh, major group drive in this festival, and we have uh, uh, an NGO, uh, we have the Emirates Literature Foundation, all coming, uh, as well as all the media uh, channels and uh, houses, all coming together to put this festival together. We really need positive thinking more than ever. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tension in the region and having this as a, a platform to come and bring different views of points uh, to uh, come closer and just appreciate and respect and understand. I think this is the ultimate goal and uh, for that everybody is doing their best. During this festival I'm proud to introduce my second novel, uh, That Other Me, so uh, that will be released in January 26th. So hopefully by that time people will have read it and loved it and come to see me at the festival. So I'll be participating uh, in a number of uh, different uh, sessions. Uh, there's one on one, there's I think one with a panel, and also I will be um, uh, involved in the education day, which is um, you know visiting schools and giving talks there. So I'm gonna be very active this year in the festival. And finally in the bulletin, 
The first edition of the Dubai Watch Week, the global event dedicated to the craftsmanship and innovation in the watch industry, has attracted a great deal of key industry influences from the global watch sector. Running until the 22nd of October, the event is supported by Her Highness Sheikha Latifa bint Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice Chairman, Chairperson of Dubai Culture and Arts Authority, Ahmed Siddiqui and Sons, in association with GPHD to create a platform for attendees to engage with some of the world's most recognized watch personalities, makers, collectors, bloggers and brands. The event is currently taking place in the Dubai International Financial Center, where a host of curated programs are being conducted across key art galleries located in the Gate Village. The programs include watchmaking masterclasses hosted by some of the watch industry's renowned watchmakers, giving attendees the opportunity to learn firsthand the art of assembling timepieces. It was uh, our uh, third watchmaker class, so I'm happy to be here in Dubai to show, to explain a little bit more than, uh, what is our work as watchmakers, uh, what uh, looks in a fine watch, what is important to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to have a fine watch, and what's the different technologies what we make. For us, for Lang and Tiny watches, is the finish of different watch parts, the important thing. Of course, we have complicated watches, also three-hand watches but uh, I say each watch part must be um, uh, have a, a very nice architecture and uh, must be a, a kind a, a thing of, of art um, and when, when, when we combine it together in one watch it must be a wow for a customer. According to the organizers one of the event's main highlights is the GBHG exhibition which was held to provide watch connoisseurs in Dubai an opportunity to see the contenders for the prestigious GPHG award. Additionally, the Art of Horology Forum is another attraction within the Dubai Watch Week, where over 30 speakers from the creative watch and journalism scenes are discussing the current trends of the watch industry that will include creativity, innovation and transmission of knowledge. First of all, it's an open uh, candidacy with 12 categories, as you can see in the exhibition. We have a jury of uh, 24 uh, jury members. Uh, it's an international jury from 15 different countries. Uh, they hold a pre-meeting for the pre-selection, and these are the watches or the pieces that are exhibited here now. Then they will meet again next week uh, prior in Geneva for a whole day prior to the award ceremony to choose the best watch uh, to be the winner. We are a new brand uh, for Dubai, but we have a very traditional name in the German watchmaking, Moritz Grossmann. And uh, so what we feel is that the collectors are perhaps surprised because we have a special piece, our tourbillon, our Benno tourbillon, and it's a flying three-minute tourbillon with a painted second stop made of a brush of hair. So it's unusual in, the, in a movement that you find really real hair in a movement. And uh, so we feel really well. And I think it's uh, the people start to recognize us and that's important for us. I think it fits pretty perfect in. As Christine said, we are a small independent brand. Uh, and this exhibition gives more attention to especially the small and independent brands. And uh, Morris Crossman has uh, very typical features, I think, which are quite interesting for the Dubai market.